Sean Slevin. I'm the executive director and founder of Swim Strong Foundation, and I'm here to welcome you to Bushwick. Welcome to Bushwick and our programming here. Today, I'm so excited to be able to host this opportunity with two-time Olympian Leah Neal. And she's here to tell you not only about being a better swimmer and demonstrate some of those techniques that will help you be so, but also how to be a better person. She's a phenomenal role model for that. So without any further ado, let's turn it over to Leah and let's get this party started. Leah Neal. That's showbiz. Um, thank you, Sean, for the introduction. Thank you, everyone, for coming out. Um, it's really cool to see all of your faces and see all your smiling faces and see how excited you are with your caps and suits on ready to go. Um, I'll just keep this short and sweet because I know you're all eager to get in the water and I have a lot that I've learned over the last 18 years that I'm going to try to cram into <laughs> this one session for you guys. Um, just a little bit of background on myself. I started taking lessons when I was six um, and then uh, did two years of that and then joined a swim team and started swimming competitively at the age of eight. Um, I swam from the ages of eight to 18 all on the same team at Asphalt Green on the Upper East Side. Um, I, uh, during that time, um, I just took swimming little by little, step by step. Like my only goals when I first started were to like improve on my technique, go best times, break meet rec or break meet records, break team records, break national age group records, um, make the junior national team, uh, which is the which is Team USA for kids 18 and under. That allowed me to travel all over the world to Guam, uh, Berlin, Stockholm, Moscow, uh, Peru. Um, and I did that for quite a bit. And then that led to uh, 2012, uh, the summer of 2012, I was looking forward to making my first national team. And that just so happened to line up with the Olympics that year. Um, so uh, just giving it all I got, all I had, I um, had the 50, the 100 and 200 free going into Olympic trials. I thought I had a better shot at making the 200 free, but ended up adding three seconds in that. Didn't make it back to semifinals. Um, instead, I just had to refocus and use the 100 free as my shot at making the Olympic team. Um, so I used all my focus towards the 100, ended up coming in fourth, which makes the Olympic team on the relay. Um, went to London, uh, ended up getting a bronze medal, swimming on that relay, um, and then uh, from then on finished up my senior year of high school. Next up was uh, looking at colleges. I ended up going to Stanford, swam there all four years. Um, my senior year, we ended up winning our first national championship in 19, yeah, 19 years. Uh, which was cool and was kind of the fairy tale ending uh, to my collegiate career. And um, the year before that, I, I also made the 2016 Olympic team and won a silver in the 400 free relay. Um, yeah, so that's just a brief history of my swim career. Uh, and if I could give you a couple takeaways from all my years of experience in swimming, it's that you should, as cliche as it sounds, but you should never give up. You should always work for what you want. Um, don't let uh, bad performances or, um, or a plateau of like not improving in something that you've been training so hard for in an event that you've wanted to improve and drop time in for so long. Um, don't let that discourage you. Just keep at it. Try to learn new ways to get better. Um, for me, I feel the basis of good swimming is good technique, um, and that's what I'm going to. Uh, that's what I'm looking forward to helping you guys um, get better at today. And um, yeah, and also, I think the most important thing is to trust yourself and know that you know yourself more than anyone does. So you know what you're capable of. You know what you need to do in order to achieve what you want to achieve. So 
really just put all of your mind or and body and effort and energy and passion into what you set uh, what you set out to do, and you can only accomplish what you want, and everything else would just fall in line as long as you put in the work. That's also important, having good work ethic. So um, yeah, that was just a really quick uh, wrap up of my career and. Uh, I think we're ready to get in the water, right? <laughs> All right, Coach Leo, what's our first drill? Okay, um, usually I would do some activation or like stretching before getting in, but I know we only have a limited, a limited amount of time here, so let's just do 100 freestyle to warm up. Just make it just long and stretched out. I don't want you guys sprinting or anything. I'm not sprinting. <laughs> All right, you heard not that? Okay, you guys can go whenever you're ready. Uh -huh. Be first one in! Okay. Um, we're going to do drill progression and what drill progression is is that you're basically doing, you're building on top of the drill that you did previous to eventually add up to normal freestyle. So uh, the basis of good freestyle and good all the other strokes is having a good body line. So we're going to start off with the 25 Superman kick on your stomach and while you're doing this you're going to be face down, eyes looking at the bottom of the pool kicking with their arms out in front, not in streamline, they could just be shoulder width apart. And as you're doing that, I want you to keep three things in mind. And you're going to have to remember this as we build on top of the drills and start adding in the arms more and more. Um, you want to think of the first thing being your head position, making sure it's a neutral head position that you're not looking up too high and you're not burying your head either, because your head position is what sets the tone for the rest of your body position. So um, as you probably know, like when you look up, the rest of your body is going to sink, right? Your hips drop and your legs drop and you're going through the water like this, which is not very efficient. So making sure that you keep a, a neutral head position, which is basically the way that you're standing right now. Like you're not, you're not like dipping your head, you're not looking up to the ceiling either. A good way of like reminding yourself when you're in the water is to make a double chin. That really keeps everything in line. That's the first thing, head position. Second thing is pressing down on the chest a bit to lift the hips up. Because you want to be as close to the surface, being on top of the water as possible. And then the third thing is keeping a tight core, because when you keep a tight core, that's going to hold everything else together. So, um, and that eventually becomes more and more important as we add in the rotation. So the three things, head position, press down on the chest to get the hips up, and keeping your core tight. Um, and a way of remembering to keep the core tight is that you're, you're trying to flex, like you're trying to show off your six pack, or like someone's try, about to punch you, you want to flex so that it doesn't hurt so much when they do punch you. So that's how you keep this tight, okay? So a 25 of that, whenever you need to breathe, just skull a little bit, pick your head up, catch your breath, and then put your head back down in line with your eyes looking at the bottom of the pool, okay? 25 Superman kick uh, whenever you're ready. Okay, that was that was good. That looks good. But I still see a lot of you guys lifting your head up to see where the wall is or to see where the person in front of you is. Just make sure that your eyes are looking at the line at the bottom of the pool, okay? All right, ready, go.
Okay, that was better. Now I saw some of you guys are already doing what I'm going to ask you to do, which is good, but now I want you rotating the entire time from side to side. So where does the rotation come from? Yeah, the hips. So now we're going to kick on our stomach, hands down by our side, but rotating from side to side constantly. And I want you to make sure that when you rotate on the side, say on your right side, for example, your right shoulder is out and dry, so you're completely on your side. And then when you rotate onto your left side, the left shoulder is completely out of the water and dry. And when you need to get your breath, just turn your head, sneak a breath, and then put your head back into place, and then go back into your rotation. All right, 25 of that. Ready, go. end up um, when you end up like lifting up your head too much and get out of your body line okay so in order to get your hips up remember to press down on the chest we'll do the same thing going back remember keep the core tight because that's what's going to help you rotate from side to side more smoothly and easily okay same thing ready go 